been sent here, not as robots, not as slaves. You have been sent here as children, children who can choose to recognize the Lord or not. Children who can choose light or darkness, it's all up to you. Nothing can be forced. But when you obey the Lord, when you obey Him out of a desire, not so much out of fear, but out of a desire to honor the Lord, that is everything. When you do that, when you choose the Lord, His goodness, because you love the light, that's when you know you truly belong to Him. Because we know we have wheat and tares. Tares, no matter how hard they try, they love the darkness, and thus they will keep going back to the darkness. They do love the darkness. They do love violence. They do love hurting other people. They do love that stuff. But as the wheat, you love the light. You do not enjoy nor take enjoyment out of hurting anybody. You do not have enjoyment in disobeying the Lord. In fact, most of the wheat, they don't like this world because in order to navigate in this world, you have to do some very cruel things or sometimes it appears like you won't, you, you just won't make it. And so wheat, they don't like that. So naturally, you're the children who would embrace the Father when he comes back. You're going to love him even the more. You're the children that the hope of being with the Lord keeps you going every single day. The tears are not so. Their enjoyment is in this world, in controlling things, in controlling other people, which makes the wheat and the tear very different. You're sent here as children with a choice to choose light or not. And it's totally up to you. For those who have chosen the light, for those who, yes, they have sin in their lives, but they desire to do nothing but good. Those who can't stand themselves because of what they have committed in the earth, you have a savior. A savior who is an advocate with the Father. And that advocate is the one being sent back, who will be in all view of men, who is opening the seals we find in Revelation, who is unleashing what he unleashes all over the earth, who is completing this entire task, this entire time. You see, a time is coming where all the children who have chosen the light will go right to the light. And that time is closely approaching. It also happens to be the time when those who have chosen darkness begin to establish what they want to establish. And this is what I want to talk to you about to really drive home the point that you're sent here to love the Lord by your freedom or not. No one's going to force you to sign with the Lord because that would be wrong. And no one's going to force you to sign with the darkness because that would be wrong. All of us are making a choice internally, which is the identification of us. Because if you are a child of light, you're always going to desire to be without sin. You're always going to desire to be with the Lord. Always. And you may have sin in your life. You may be, you know, do plenty of things right now. But you have a desire to be with the Lord. And I'm telling you that it is Christ who will cause that to be a fulfillment in your life also. He will complete your walk with you. Do you understand? He's going to complete that. So that desire that you have is going to be met. Because you desire to be a child of the Most High. And you freely, out of your freedom, you love the Lord. No, you don't do everything right. And yes, you have a laundry list of things against you. I do too. We're, we're all basically the same. All of us do. But we love the Lord. And the way he did that is just so incredible. I want to tell you that first, because often when we're talking about things in Revelation, things to come, and I'm not going to get into the, you know, the, the, the a lot of it tonight, but when you're talking about Revelation, it causes a person to sometimes the spirit rises up. This is well, I've not done all that stuff wrong, that I should suffer like that. Anyway, let me tell you something. A tear will always protect itself. A true child of the living God, they already know they deserve death. In me and my life, everything in Revelation, I deserve to fall right up on my head. A tear will say, well, I've got to save myself at all costs. That's not going to happen to me. They get bold about it. But if you think about something, with so much sin that we have committed in our lives, how in the world can we get bold about something like that, thinking that we truly don't deserve it? You know, I listen to a lot of people in this world World. As I've aged, I've heard so many people say, well, I deserve better. No, you deserve death. That's what you deserve. See, they can't even see what they have committed in the earth. And this competition in, in, in faith, in believing, the strange thing is there's so many people who have been so desensitized 
to Christ because we don't have instant punishment here. And because we don't, anybody can justify just about anything they do. They can say, well, the Lord didn't strike me down, so it can't be too wrong. And you see them getting away with things all the time. But for those who belong to Christ, even when a person gets away from things, you're not focused on that. You're focused on, I wish that person was delivered, and then they wouldn't do that. I found myself doing that all the time. If that person knew Christ, they wouldn't do that to anybody else. That's when I go into this, my meditation with the Lord, and I say, Lord, help me to say something that will get this person's attention to make them aware of what they're doing in a way that won't embarrass them so they can make that change with you. And at that point, I'm willing to do whatever the Lord desires me to do because I want people to be delivered, not to die. A true child of the living God takes no joy in the death of another, just as the Father. Do you know that the Father in heaven has no desire for anybody to perish outside of him? He has no desire for anybody to go to hell. He desires that everybody repent. That's love, because God is love. That's a thought process of love itself. And when you have love within you, you're going to think the same way. But if you have something else in you, you're going to think differently. Now, there are lots of people who fake like they have love, but it's very easy to tell. I'm going to say it again. Your Father in heaven desires that no one perish outside of Him. That's what He desires. So if a person desires that a person perishes and goes to the pit, they're not thinking by way of love. To thinking by another force, and it's not love. Love is never absent forgiveness. Love is never absent mercy and grace. But you have a lot of people out there, and you guys know them. All they talk about is cross, who's going to die because they did so and so. Oh, they did this, they're going to die. They're wicked. They're this. They're always accusing. And that's what Satan did when he was before the Father day and night, accusing everybody in view of the Lord day and night. Now he's in the earth accusing getting everybody he can to accuse one another. When you realize your own sin and your own infractions against the Lord, that's the day you stop accusing. I can't accuse you guys of anything. I'm the worst one here. You have no idea. There's nothing I can accuse you of. I didn't commit three times over, but I have no interest in accusing anybody. That's why I talk now, not to accuse anybody, but to help open the eyes of individuals that they may see a portion of the truth that the Lord may begin to work in their life and their souls can be redeemed. I don't desire any to go with those things of darkness I've seen. Oh, I have a desire for all things to be redeemed. See, the Lord redeemed me. The depth of his love is immeasurable, which means there's lots of room in the kingdom of God. And if we freely choose him, not by way of manipulation, it must be the other person's choice. That's why I never try to convince anybody of scripture. I don't try to convince them that God is real. I don't try to convince them that there's certain understanding in scripture is just the way you do it. I don't do that. I don't waste my time doing it. But I will talk to those who want to hear. Because I understand that everybody won't hear you always. They won't. Everybody has a season that the Lord will open up their hearts so they can hear. That's up to the Lord. But I'm willing to go through the 10,000 to get to the one. How about that? I'm willing to take all abuses to find the one. Because all I can see is me out there lost in the world again. And the Lord never gave up on me, nor will I give up on somebody else. Those people who have freely chosen the Lord, those are the ones who have hope for others. Unfortunately, that hope that people have in others is being lost because the count of the tears, the tears are actually surfacing. But it just so happens the real wolf is coming. Do you guys know what the real wolf is? Most people don't. The Bible speaks of a wolf in sheep's clothing. The truth is, that was an example of how people hide. But the Bible also speaks about the real wolf that comes right after the ministers. Uh oh Yes. There's a real wolf coming that will scatter the people. And all the hirelings are going to run. A hireling is somebody who does what they do for money because they're being hired to do it. Speaking to other people like this, if it's of the Lord, then it's for the Lord, not for the person. A real wolf is coming and he will scatter a great many people. Are you ready to be a recipient of those scattered? I mean a real one, not to preach to them either, but to demonstrate. See, unlike other times in history, this time you're going to have to lead them somewhere. This time it'll be by demonstration, not words, not by speeches, but by action. See, as darkness rises upon the face of the earth, and as things begin to happen, so will the Holy Spirit begin to move in many of God's vessels. You will always find that those working powers of the Holy Spirit are always in proportion to how darkness unveils itself. But it just so happens that partition between life and death is being removed. Hope you understand that. That, that partition between life and death is what people call the veil. 
And we do have a prepared study about the veil, because it doesn't actually use that word veil. It uses a Hebrew word, which they translated into Greek, and then from there to the Old English. But before Old English, the French got a hold of it first, and it was changed, and then a story was formed around it. We're going to get down to the heart of it so that you can see what divides life and death is about to be taken away, and is fooling a great many people. In fact, let me tell you what the King James Version of the Bible says upon study, that as we get closer to the end, that part Partition of life or death will be harder and harder to discern. Some of those who have long been past, their presence will be known again. Now, you know what's so funny? Now, be sober, but we have a lot of ghost shows on. You know, right now, there are about there are millions of people who have had their encounters with spirits they call ghosts. You know, you can laugh all you want until you get affected by one. And it's not a joke, you know. But that more and more people are starting to see this. Never in history has there been a time like this when people have been so open about what they've been seeing. They have been so open that the Navy has released also its files pertaining to ghosts and their spiritual pursuits that they have paid for. You didn't even know that the Pentagon had paid trillions of dollars pursuing the identification of spirits. You didn't even know that. You didn't even know that during certain inaugurations, Thoth, showed up, like characters like Ra, Thoth, all these, the dog-headed individual, right? These individuals showed up among the people. You don't even know that they had ceremonies with them. See, for the most part, these guys that you say are in secret societies or whatever you want to say, they are living a type of reality that's very real. They, they're on the wrong side, and most of them are trapped, but they have seen what we find hard to believe, something the Bible has warned us about, and it's all coming back. See, when Christians see these things because of their lack of faith in the first place, many Christians are going to have heart attacks. Their hearts are going to fail them for fear for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. I noticed something. That statement is written to the Christians, to the Bible readers. That statement is not written for the world, but for the Bible readers. Most of the words in this Bible are not for the sinners. They're for us, those who say they believe. And do you know how many people read the Bible? Quite a few. But they can't believe in things like that, which is why they're so bedazzled over UFOs. They don't know the proper identification. And if you sat around and talked about what a tiny little sphere of light is, they would have no context for it. Because it's not some tiny little sphere of light. It's not even in this dimension. So think of the, the lights in the sky that you see as holes poked at a dimensional wall. And somebody's looking through to the other side. Right now, there are places on the earth where you can look. Guaranteed, in the middle of the night, you're going to look out and see the sky sky lit mountains and everything else but no mountains you've ever seen on this planet you'll look right through a hole in the sky at a brand new world that looks just like this one but it's opposite this one just hope you don't see nothing crawling through because men can invite things from that domain to this one and they've been doing it for a long time that domain sits with this one right now they're all over the place all around you based upon the choices you make they can come through or not I know in my life so many things are sealed or they can't get through. But if you tell a, if you, if you sit there and you uh, a plot against somebody else, that's evil. Now, in that evil, when you're plotting against somebody else, thoughts will enter into your mind. Where do those thoughts come from? They're not coming from you. Only pride can make a person, person think that. When you are, are contemplating something, you're always going to receive help. And most of the time, it's not from light. It's from darkness. So when you get help in your thoughts to work out a plan against somebody, you're in communication with something that is abiding in a domain of death. And what you're doing is inviting that thing into your life. So you provide the entry point for that thing to work in your life and if you commit that thing that door gets stuck open for you unless you repent turn away from those sins because only jesus can close those things but men will be able to see what they have invited to enter their lives think of it this way think of you living your life and all throughout your life you made choices and you did things but you saw no evidence of any of your evil or anything else so one day comes and all of a sudden you start saying these ropes attached to you and they're on your arms on your knees on your legs on your neck and you're 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 just in the mirror you're having a heart attack saying what is this and at the end of every single rope every single string is a dark entity so horrific in form that you can't even take what you're looking at but for all those things you do in your life they become your help to do that darkness for every action you perform in your life they were the helpers of that action not angels but dark entities for all the thoughts you had you let in a council of dark entities 
that abide with you. And when you're able to see them, it's going to look like a thousand people stuck around people. They're going to be the darkness by which man did work under the counsel of thousands. And when they see that, they're done for. But they won't die because you can't die in the realm of death. You know in the Bible when it says men will seek death but will not find it? You know in the Bible when it says the living will envy the dead? You know how a dog has a leash? You're holding that leash connected to a bunch of dogs. Darkness is the same way. You're the one holding the leash and it just so happens to be connected to your soul and darkness is on the other end helping every evil that you do. Darkness will assign their experts to help you out in every evil thing you do. Should you choose to do it, you're going to be helped doing it. In fact, men will find out that for everything they have done, for everything they conceived, there was something behind it ready to help, whether that be good or bad. I will submit to you right now that angels are appointed to all of us, but we don't employ our angels all the time because we don't live our lives according to God's standards. Angels may only help in areas of light, in areas that God has sanctioned them to help in. So a lot of them will stand by unemployed. So that means you're sitting around right now with a potential, with a host of things around you right now, ready to move based upon what you choose. Should you choose the way of the Lord in the Bible, it already says they will lift you up in God's ways. So if you want to walk in the ways of the Lord, angels are right there to assist, to hold you up in those ways of the Lord. But if you choose it to do it by any other way, you have no idea what you're in contact with. Have you guys ever noticed that when you're angry, a different energy is what you feel in your body? To me, it feels like a pollutant. It feels wrong. When I'm angry, it feels wrong, like it shouldn't be there. It feels like I'm the dirtiest person in the world when I get angry. When you really begin to see the truth of yourself, that's when discernment is no longer blinded in your life. You know how we blind ourselves? Because somehow we think we think we matter in the way we have built ourselves. The way we have made ourselves, we think that person matters. That's what we think. Vanity. The truth is, what we have made ourselves to be to ourselves, if it does not line up with what God has made us to be, then we live in vanities and are deceived. But if we let those things down, if we stop trying to be the controller of our lives, if we release all those things unto the Lord and begin to hear Him and walk in His ways, we start walking a different direction. Addictions, all these things, they fall apart. It, wouldn't it be something if some of you who say you can't smoke anymore laid everything down? I mean, for real. Listen to me. You laid everything down. What I mean by everything is you stop trying to be the one that knows the right way. Stop doing that. If you stop doing that, if you stop trying to be the one that knows how to do this and how to do that, if you stop trying to be the one that makes the right decisions about this, that, or the other, just lay all of that down. Start placing your brother and sister above your own life. Even to the scum of the earth, place them above your own life. The Lord will begin to move in your life in a very different way. You'll find yourself not contending with these habits. Because see, when you're leading your own life, you're going to have a lot to do. The reason why you can't break the addiction is because you have no power to. If you're leading your own life, you're under your own steam. You don't have enough power to break the darkness that's in this world. You don't have enough power yourselves. But if you start yielding all those things unto the Messiah, and the Messiah becomes great in your life, even to the point where you are humble and you don't get into arguments about the Bible anymore. See, when you don't argue about the Bible, that's when you stop trying to prove that what you believe is the right way to believe. And when you lay all that down, you have truly placed yourself in a very humble position. And because you've done that, you've also surrendered unto the Messiah. And he becomes a leader in your life. And now you're not walking by yourself, but you're walking by the leading of the Lord. So it's by his power, things are supplied and broken. And he can easily break every yoke in your life. But he must be in charge, not yourselves. That's when you experience the supernatural things. If you experience something supernatural from the Lord, a miracle, right? Let me ask you something. For those of you who still smoke, if the Lord took away the addiction of smoking right now, you have no desire to smoke. You may yelp and yell for a miracle, but you won't be able to validate it until a few days from now. The question is, when you're sitting around bored and you have nothing to do, will you take up that habit again? See, if there's no change on the inside, the miracle is not going to matter. If I broke every bone in my body and the Lord healed me from breaking every bone in my body, but the Lord did not fix the cause as to why I got every bone in my body broken, I want to be in the same position again. Thus, that healing will be void. And the Lord does not do void things. 
Suppose I was a, a, I raced cars all my life and I was in 13 bad accidents and the Lord healed me of the last one. He healed me and I jumped up and said, the Lord healed me of 32 broken bones. Mike, are you going to race this week? Oh yes, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Now, because I have still have a heart to put myself in that danger again, do you really think the Lord's going to heal me? No. The Lord doesn't heal people so they can be broken again. It's not why he heals. Once you're fixed on the inside, the physical healing to anything naturally comes. But when the cause internally does not change, very seldom do you see healing. Internally, if you change on the inside, the Lord is just to quicken the outside. That's the biggest hint I can give you about healing. There's something on the inside of us that is so incredibly stubborn. It keeps doing the same thing. It keeps putting us in the same position. We keep the same pride. We don't sit in this humble place anymore. We just keep doing it. And then we wonder why we have all these, you know, why the Lord, Lord won't heal this and heal that and do the miraculous thing here. And it's because we have not changed on the inside. The Lord is so just in his ways that when your ailment or whatever it is, is no longer in the way of your servitude toward the Lord by way of your heart of what you want to do for the Lord. The Lord is just a quicken, the physical side of you that will always match the internal portions of you. See, sometimes we have a hard time figuring things out, right? The Lord said, that, what did the Lord say about your servitude? If you serve the Lord, he'll make sure you have everything you need to serve him. Didn't he say that? I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he said that. If your servitude requires full function, functionality of your body, you're going to have that full functionality. If your servitude requires that you not sit around in pain all the time, you won't have that pain all the time. If you're not going to serve the Lord because of something is missing or something is wrong or something like that, then you have not seen the truth of servitude yet. You've not found it yet. Most people choose to serve and they say, Lord, if you give me A, B, C, D, and E, I'll serve you. That's not the way you do it. You serve the Lord with what you have. So if you, if a person were to ever to say, if they were to ever say, where I'm at, Lord, I'll serve you with what I have. And start serving the Lord. They find themselves being supplied with everything they need to continue that servitude. When they do this by way of truth, it'll be supplied to you. The Lord does not work in vanities or all these sensationalized ways. The Lord works in truth. All the time he works in truth. I'm so grateful for that, though, because there are lying signs and wonders out there you can see right through. Now you know them. Now you know some things are facing. But understand this. You're here to make a free choice for the Lord or not. And nothing is forced. Remember, the, the Antichrist worships the God of forces. He forces and manipulates people to do what they do. The Lord does not do that. The Lord allows us to make a choice out of the depths of our heart without interference. We are free to choose so that whatever you choose, none of us can ever say we were coerced into choosing it. We were forced into choosing it. But it'll be out of the depths of the truth of our heart. So we will end up being exactly what we chose. And I know a Christian, though they may have sin in their lives, they don't desire to do anything against the Almighty. They do love the Lord despite what anybody says. So folks, I'm telling you something. See, I don't like the phonyism and some of the sensationalism and all this stuff that's taking place. No, because this time we need soldiers. We don't need the other ones. The soldiers and truth. So hopefully, if you're if you're listening to me, you understand now, you don't have to be this perfect person with a lineage of perfect people in your life to be that standout individual with the Lord. No, you can only be who you are. Nothing should be altered. But true servitude to the Lord is recognition of the Lord. And a child of the living God wants the same thing as the Father wants for the children. Even in the talk about the freedom of the child grabbing the neck of the parent, you understand the parent's point of view in loving a child. My, the Lord, may do the way he did, where you can choose between darkness and light. So that, with great encouragement, you will choose based on truth. That you won't fall for the tricks of the adversary.